prizemag.com. I'm Juan. We're uh, We Rise Mag. We're doing this from Ramen Khan. I'm here with the lovely Tiffany Grant. And uh, why don't we just start with an intro on, you know, how you got into business, what you've been in. Well, hi, I'm uh, Tiffany Grant. Uh, we are here in lovely Merrillville, Indiana, in the uh, greater Chicagoland area. And uh, I've been in the anime industry now for almost 20 years. I've been doing uh, conventions since 97 done uh, over a couple hundred of those, uh, had a background in theater, and uh, found out about the very first auditions that were held for ADV in Houston, uh, as I said, almost 20 years ago, and showed up at the auditions, and I got hired, so I've been doing it ever since. Okay, any uh, current projects that you can talk about right now? Uh, yeah, there was a project that I recently worked on. It was actually dubbing for a live action film for Switchblade Pictures called Big Bad Mama Son. And I'm very excited about that. It is R rated, so uh, it's a not for the children. Um, but it's really awesome. I got to play the lead character, the Big Bad Mama herself. So I'm super excited about it. It's this young woman whose uh, father dies, leaves her in horrible debt. The only thing he has to leave her is his truck. And it's the whole Decatora thing, if anybody's familiar with that. It's like these super elaborately decorated trucks that people drive in Japan, like deck tricked out like a paint job, chandeliers, you know, everything. It's super fancy anyway. Like pimp my ride. Happening. Exactly. <laughs> it's like a pimp my ride kind of a thing. And so I'm Nami, the lead, and there's going to be four of them all together. So we did the first one. I think that's coming out in a couple months. I'm very excited about that. And then, of course, you know, the usual, I've done stuff recently and I can't talk to you about it. The old Ding. NDA. <laughs> All right, so you're a huge Hello Kitty fan. When exactly did that start, you know, that that uh, love of Hello Kitty get started? <gasps> well, the original love of Hello Kitty was w actually way back in the 70s when it first came over to the U.S., and uh, I enjoyed that in my childhood, and then many, many, many years passed, as they do, and somehow back in the late 90s, I just kind of noticed it had popped back up all nostalgia wise and I kind of just got sucked right back into it again and then I couldn't stop myself somehow so I, it's an uncontrollable impulse to purchase and collect um, many many Hello Kitty items. Okay. In uh, Azumanga Daio you play kind of a hopeless you know <sighs> in love girl who's in love with uh, Sakaki. What did you uh -huh. think of like that relationship? Because it never really felt like it was kind of a lesbian it thing or you were anything. Well, she was a lesbian. I don't think Sakaki was necessarily no. a lesbian. Obviously, Cowering is, but it's just an unrequited love. I mean, Cowering is uh, probably her first love and, you know, she's completely infatuated with Miss Sakaki and Miss Sakaki just really wants to own a cat. <laughs> I mean, that's really all Miss Sakaki's about, is uh, wanting to get the cat. But uh, I, I really liked playing Cowering. It was a really different uh, kind of a role for me. It's super funny show. I mean, the show is just great. I just love watching that show. And it was very exciting to get to be a part of being in the show, too, a show that I like so much. All right. Uh, speaking of funny shows, you wrote and uh, also starred in The Wallflower. Mm -hmm. What was it like script adapting a show <laughs> by Nabashin? <laughs> well, um, I've read the manga and the, you know, that's a show where it's really just lifted right out of the manga. So he's not, I mean, he's the director of the anime, but he's not the creator of the story. So it is very uh, faithful to Hayakawa-san's uh, manga, and uh, his direction of it was crazy, as usual. Before that, I had acted in um, Excel Saga and Puni Puni Poemi, so I had worked on uh, some of his work before. Honestly, doing the script adaptations for that show, though, I would say is probably the hardest show that I've ever done scripts for. It was really crazy. It was filled with so many 
really niche uh, cultural references, all these crazy puns and things. And uh, I actually did get to meet the scriptwriter for the show in Japanese was also a woman. And we all did a convention together in Houston. I've done several conventions with Navasheen, and he is hoo-hoo. But um, yeah, uh, the writer for the show, she's one of those uh, really cool people who only has one name, Harka. Uh -huh. And uh, anyway, so she was the writer for the, the Japanese version. So it's interesting because the manga was written by a woman and the scripts were written by a woman, but I think it's really just telling of Nabuchin basically likes to be surrounded by women. <laughs> I think that's pretty much what you Yeah, I met him last that. year, so I know that one. Yes, yeah. I, in, um, in Excel Saga, one of the many characters I played was Kumi Kumi, who is a character based on his actual wife. So according to Nabuchin, I'm his American wife. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. That's how I introduced myself to him. When I, when I met him the first time in Chicago about, oh, probably about eight, Seven, about seven years ago, and I told him that I was Kumi Kumi, and he's like, oh, you're my American wife, so, score. <laughs> wow, I had another question, and I just, I, I just lost I know. it. Once you start thinking it. about <laughs> Nabashin and <laughs> the Afro, it's mesmerizing. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I met him at Anime Midwest last year, and it was, uh, it was crazy. It yes. was crazy. Um, but what I was going to ask you was, uh, I met Spike Spencer at mm -hmm. Anime Midwest, and I'm, he... I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was tight. We were talking crazy. Yeah, Spike Spencer, uh, uh -huh. yeah, that was uh, sorry, another level ahead. of crazy. I'll be your therapist now. But you met Spike Spencer, and how have you dealt with that? Uh, not easily. Not easily. <laughs> it, it's been hard. I, I just... Uh -huh. I don't know. I, I don't Did know how to explain Did you have to join it. AA afterwards? Yeah, I, Probably. I almost, <laughs> I almost thought I had to. I almost thought I had to. <laughs> but uh, I think he might need to go first, but, you know. <laughs> But mm -hmm. so I met Spike Spencer, and uh, he they did a sort of midnight panel, so mm -hmm. you know, eighteen over panel, mm -hmm. and somebody brought up uh, something about a PSA that you and he did, mm -hmm. that apparently you did so well it never actually got used. That is a very true story. Um, this was back probably, maybe in the late nineties or so. Uh, there was a particular recording studio that Spike did a lot of work with in Houston, uh, doing a lot of commercials and things like that. And they were going to do, they had been commissioned by the city of Houston to do a public service announcement about AIDS awareness and using condoms. And uh, so they wanted to do a PSA where the background was teenagers having sex in a car while the deep voiced announcer is like, one of these kids is killing the other one, boom, 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 you know. Anyway, so there's the narrator giving you the important facts while in the background is the, ah, oh, mm, right? So they needed a female to do the thing with Spike because it would just be creepy if he did it by himself. I was like, don't give yourself AIDS, wear a condom, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, so they needed a girl and Spike was like, I'll get Tiffany, she'll totally do it. So they called me and I'm like, sure, of course. So um, we were in separate rooms, just so you know, Spike was in one booth, I was in another booth, there was no physical contact. But anyway, yeah, apparently when the production team got finished with it and handed it into the city of Houston, they were like, oh. I mean, they really thought that, I don't know, there was like some lover's lane where these guys had gone <laughs> along with a microphone out to someone's window. But uh, yeah, they never, they never used it. <laughs> I still have a copy of it. <laughs> it's on a cassette tape, so that should tell you how long ago it was that we did that. It is on a cassette tape. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow, okay. Yeah. Um, so in noir. Yes, in noir. You, you <laughs> play sort of a villain character, uh, very uh -huh. villainous. Yes. It, although she doesn't really consider herself a no, villain. No, most villains so what, don't, that's what I like. What was that whole experience like? <sighs> well, noir is, an amazing show. It's really well written. I mean, the music is fantastic. Um, it was a really different character for me. It's the only time I've really played a character that's quite like Altina. And like you say, it's these, these plans that she has, these ideas about how things are supposed to be, to her, it's just very cut and dried, and she is right. And so what if maybe 10 or 20 or hundreds of people have to be killed in the process? It's just the way that it is. And uh, you know, she doesn't really have to get her hands dirty. She has, 
people to and, do that ends for her. Justify the means. Type exactly, thing. the ends justify the means. And really, what was difficult for me about that character is that she was just so understated. You know, I always wanted her to be like, Whoa, all my plans, <laughs> but no, I mean, she was never like that. I just had to be almost emotionless with Altina. And it was really difficult to be so understated with that performance to get it, you know. And it was creepier. I mean, Matt Greenfield directed that, and he was absolutely right. It's like it was very much a less is more kind of a thing that uh, she needed to be just very cool and cold. And someone told me one time that they there was a particular line that I said that they reminded me of it, but I, I agree, it is a cool line, and I said it. And it was something like, uh, if if love can kill, then surely hate can save. It was something like that. Like, oh, that'll give you goosebumps, but it was, it was a great show. I was gonna ask about, uh, I saw on the site, you, you have done a CD, a music mm -hmm. CD mm -hmm. with several other voice actors. It's mm -hmm. like Greg Ayers, Brittany Karbowski, and many others. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called Voices for Change and, or Voices it's Voices for Peace. There's actually two. There was Voices for Peace and then Voice. Voices for Tolerance. There were two that we did, yeah. And, um, you know, it's just an idea that Jan Scott Frazier had several years ago to do an album to raise money for causes that we wanted to support. So uh, we did Voices for Peace and Voices for Tolerance. Uh, you know, we've raised a little bit of money over the years and uh, for organizations like Doctors Without Borders and um, the uh, Southern Poverty Law Center are two of our, our big uh, charities that we've supported. And, you know, we felt good that we were able to do that. Um, unfortunately, kind of the band broke up kind of thing. So we did do a few conventions where we actually got together and had a big concert. It was fun to kind of be a rock star for a little bit. Um, you can still actually buy them. You can um, go to CD Baby or iTunes. Um, you can download um, any of the songs from Voices for Tolerance. Unfortunately, when we did Voices for Peace, um, it was a couple years before that, and we didn't really get the clearances, so they're not available for download. You have to actually buy the compact disc. Oldie yeah. fashioned, but yeah, you have to actually buy the disc. So, but um, they're they're both available as voices for dot uh, dot org or dot com. Just Google it. You know, voices for f o r voices for. I believe it was actually linked on your anime cons dot org. It is. Org, uh, it is. It's on so exactly. If anybody wants it's to on look my it up. Website. You'll, you can you'll find it. it. Just Google me. I like <laughs> it when you do that. All right. Well, it's been a pleasure asking okay. you questions. Thanks very much, Thank you very Ron. Much, you did Ms. a good Grant. job. <laughs> Thank you. I was nervous. <laughs> <laughs>